This is fantastic. So great to see all of you here and the secretary. Thank You're you. uh, actually our 11th speaker oh. in this series and we are just absolutely honored and delighted that you could come uh, here today. We've got great sponsors for these uh, uh, speaker events that we've had. Uh, as you see on the front of your uh, program, just take a look and if you see anyone from those organizations, please give them a special thank you. This has been uh, just a great series. Uh, you are so special. <laughs> I, I, it, it's almost speechless. That's and what my children say. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, you make me speechless. But I don't think they mean the same way you do. <laughs> well, you are uh, just a leading business uh, person and for many years led, uh, I think, five different businesses, which I think prepared you for being the leader of uh, commerce with uh, a portfolio that probably should have three cabinet chairs not one, because you have more assets that you covet and that you grow here than I think any other department. Uh, you are a key member of President Obama's economic team. You have uh, just excelled in just about everything you have done. In fact, I haven't seen anything out there where you have uh, had any sort of uh, impression other than helping others being important in your community, giving back to your community. So we're here to also thank you for all of those roles that you played. And if I can kick off uh, with the first question, which is as a successful business leader, as you thought about coming uh, to work here for the president, what were those you know, kind of decision factors as you considered uh, taking this important position here? Uh, um, well, let me step back and talk about how I got involved with uh, the president and my, a little bit of my history, because it sort of informs how I ended up here. Uh, I got to know the president and the first lady on the sidelines of a, our kids' basketball games, <laughs> literally. Our, my son was seven and our daughter was five, and they wanted to play basketball, and so we went to a program at the local YMCA, and their coach was Michelle Obama's brother, Craig Robinson. And so I met the now First Lady and President, literally when they were watching their niece and nephew play basketball, and my kids were playing basketball. My children were not very good. Their niece and nephew were actually quite good. Uh, but, you know, you, any of you have young children, you know, you go out and support their interests. Anyway, um, through that, my husband and I got to know uh, Michelle and, and then, you know, the Michelle and Barack is how we knew them. Uh, and when he decided to run for the Senate, asked us if we would help him. And so that's how, you know, we would, we got to know each other socially and then trying to help him become senator and then I had a very full business life. I ran actually a bunch of companies. I started five companies but I actually had about a hundred companies I was responsible for and so uh, actually Valerie Jarrett and Marty Nesbitt approached me and said that uh, our friend the senator wanted me to run his finance effort to become president, I thought that was crazy, absolutely crazy. I said, I've never done anything like that. I've never run a finance effort in a state, let alone nationally, and that I, um, I didn't see how I had time. I had this big f business career that I was busy doing. I had my philanthropic activities. I had a husband and two children who were in high school, and how are you gonna do all that? because I can't quit, because who knew how that was gonna turn out, right? So, um, but what happened was I called my husband and I, on the way home, I said, I had the craziest lunch today, you're not gonna believe what Valerie and Marty said to me. 
And I said, there's just no way. And he said, come home. I said, well, I'm on my way home. Don't worry. So I walked into the kitchen, and we're standing there in the kitchen before dinner, and my husband starts knocking on the door of the kitchen. And I said, what are you doing? And he said, honey, this is destiny knocking on the door of our country. <laughs> you have to love my husband for the dramatic flair, right? And he said to me, you've got to find a way to do this. And so at dinner that night, and one of the things as a you know, professional, I made dinner was a priority at home. You know, if I was in town, and I, we were having dinner together as a family. So at dinner, and my children were then, I think, about 14 and 16. I may have the ages a little wrong, but I'm directionally right. And, uh, and I said, you know, I, Barack, because that's how we knew him then, uh, would like me to do this. And I said, that means I'll be away from home 50 more nights a year than I already am away from home. And it means I'll really have no free time. So this is a family decision because this is going to affect us. And they all said, Mom, you got to do this. And it became a family engagement. I mean, we went to Iowa, and we went knocking on doors in Minnesota, and we went, you know, and I was, what I did was, I, so that's how I got involved. So then, fast forward, we have a successful campaign, and the president becomes the president, and he then, a little over three years ago, uh, well, actually, before that, you know, I get a phone call, and would you be considered doing this? And I didn't know it would be possible. I hadn't helped him because I wanted this job. I, and so you go through that whole vetting process, which many of you have been through. Uh, and when, once that proctoscopic exam is finished, <laughs> you, you know, the president invited my family and me, and he announces we'd like you to uh, you know, take on this position. And for those of you who are around, you must remember what the president said to me. It was my birthday, actually. And he said, I have a birthday present for you. You get to go through confirmation. <laughs> and so that's how it happened. And that's, you know, and, and um, uh, now on a serious note, why was it exciting is because when, when I went for my meeting where the president asked me if I would consider this, he was very purposeful about his vision for what the Department of Commerce could be. And he said, you know, you, the department has the potential to be a bridge for the administration to the business community. It has the potential to be the voice of business in our administration and policy making. And it has, uh, you know, a bigger voice than it had been. And by you as a secretary having a seat at the table, uh, at the highest levels in the most complex issues that where there's a commerce equity or, or an economic equity. And then to be the chief commercial advocate for American business globally. So he was quite clear about what the potential was and felt that uh, there was a big opportunity there. And so his vision was an inspiration to try and figure it out, and that led us then to creating a strategic plan, right? So, and Secretary, I think there, I think we'd all be interested in hearing a little bit about as you made that decision, going from the private sector into a leadership role here in the administration. What factors did you think through, and then as you came here? Uh, the effort you made around the strategic plan. Could you talk a little bit about that? Well, as you, um, since we work with the business community, most, most of my friends were, or not friends, but some of my colleagues counseled me that this would be frustrating and difficult and, you know, why you want to do that? Why would you leave, you know, all the glory of running a business or all the, ex that excitement to do this? And, um, they thought the bureaucracy and the, po and the politics would frustrate me. Um, but I didn't see it that way. First of all, I grew up, like I think most of us in this room, in a culture in my, my household 
of, you know, there's no greater responsibility than serving your community or your country. And to whom much is given, much is expected. And so if the President of the United States thinks you can contribute to help him or her uh, uh, run our country better, you know, how arrogant to think that that's not an important thing to try to do, right? So I felt very humbled by the ask, and, um, but then, the okay, then you say, okay, I wanna try to do this. Now how do you do it? And I've found this, I'll just, I'll go to the bottom line, I found this to be extraordinary. I have loved every minute of this job. Even when I'm frustrated or I, you know, am, am exasperated at times as we're, you know, sorting through how to get things done, the challenge, the, the things that we get to help try and resolve, it's extraordinary. Um, and you, it's humbling because you realize what we bring to the table here is our knowledge, our capacity to learn, our enthusiasm and energy, and, and, and our teamwork. And probably the most important thing is team. And you know, it, that's to me uh, uh, been uh, one of the most exciting things is the professional folks, the 47,000 professional folks who work at the Department of Commerce you know, for the duration are extraordinary. I mean, you all are, you, what you know, what you know how to do is just inspiring to me. You know, my job is to try and figure out how to corral that to make a difference. That's how I think about what my job is, f to give extra weight to our efforts where it, with extra impetus from a secretary can make the difference. And part of doing that was you know, why do I harp on this strategic plan? I'm sure you all are tired of me talking about this. But what it did is it gave definition to who we are and what we stand for and what we're trying to accomplish. And so that's good for all of us in this building. But it's also important for the Hill, for the White House, for outs, you know, the media, for uh, uh, for the pundits and the chattering class and the advisors we all have to say, hey, here's who and what we see ourselves as and what we're trying to do. And so that's why that's been such a, uh, an anchor and I think should be an anchor because there's a, you know, I didn't, I was really frustrated by this idea, what does the Department of Commerce do? or why do we need a Department of Commerce? And I felt that we, it was incumbent upon us to tell people what, why we are important and why we're relevant and to show the role that we play, whether it's in commercial diplomacy or it's in the you know, uh, spectrum or it's you know, encryption policy or it's, um, you know, uh, the BIS licenses that we give. Why is this important? Whether it's a patent and trademark, or the information we give from census, or the National Weather Service, how does all that fit together? And that it's not something you can just implode with no consequence, which is kind of where the dialogue was when several years ago. And, and I think today there's a sense, and it's why it's incumbent on all of you to continue forward this idea of who are we and why are we important. It's not just my job, it's all of our jobs to do that. And we've tried to create a framework in our strategic plan and others may create other frameworks, but it's digestible for people who first, who are engaging with us to say, oh, okay, I get it. Absolutely. And part of our job is to help other people get the important work that goes on. It's, it's so exciting. I know we have so many data geeks here and the public assets and how important those are. You have, as part of your data pillar, made that just so important and uh, 
we have so many out there that have been thanking us for, you must have retreads on those for all of the globe trotting mm -hmm. that you have done to support commercial diplomacy and data. And I just think that's absolutely fantastic. Well, Thank you for that. No, no, I, and, and, I, and, and I, anyway, I, I could go on and on. It, <laughs> but, but I want to well, answer your, look, you know, you've thought a lot about things you want to talk about. I want to ask you, and I think everyone here will be very interested to kind of hear, as you became uh, a leader at the, at the ca in the cabinet, could you talk a little bit about some of the dynamics and how important that leadership uh, role is as, as secretary? Well, you know, when, you know, everybody always asks you, you know, when was the last cabinet meeting? I, I find that funny because the reality is we meet all the time. An official cabinet meeting is when everybody's in the room. But the reality is, you know, we met on the importance of place-based work just day before yesterday. But it wasn't a cabinet meeting. It was a subset of us who have equities there. And so the first thing is, I, 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 it's really important as a secretary to um, represent you guys well. And I feel that obligation every day in every meeting, which is, in that meeting I was going in representing the work of EDA, predominantly EDA. But you know, whether it's NO or EDA or BIS or ITA or you know, the alphabet soup of our 12 bureaus, uh, or ESA, um, you know, I think it's my job to, and it's why I'm so persnickety when we're preparing, is I have a short window in a cabinet setting to make the point of what we're doing and why it's relevant or, or to give advice if there's a, you see a hole. And in fact, we gave a piece of advice that the president just latched onto in that meeting. And I thought to myself, wow, we weren't even like the biggest players in that game, but we identified a hole in the work. And it was, it was, uh, that was very gratifying. So number one is to really, you know, do a good job of making sure that the content of what we've done is there, but then two, representing it in the context of the cabinet. I'll tell you something else that's been fascinating being part of the cabinet. There are more women, senior women, uh, in that I get to work with in this job than I've ever worked with in my life. And I step back and I think, what was wrong with my, the previous situation, that we don't have more women in leadership positions? It's nuts. And um, so that's been one of the great pleasures of being part of the cabinet. I would say the other thing, uh, that I've learned that's different than my private sector experiences, that just a lot more stakeholders to answer to in government. You know, so when someone says, we need a CEO as president, and I'm not talking about any particular person at all, I'm just talking about the concept. No, I'm serious uh, <laughs> about that. The concept, I think you need to recognize, and I've learned this, in this job is, you know, as a CEO, you have shareholders, you have customers, you have employees, and you have your supply chain and things like that. But the number of stakeholders that you have in government is much broader and more dimensions to it. And it makes it harder. It's harder to get things done. Um, having said that, we do need more compromise in general. but. Uh, you know, if you think about that, that's another thing that I've learned as being part of the cabinet. Um, I'll tell you the third thing I've learned, and I talk about this always, is the quality and the talent of people in government. Now, it's not uniform, it's not that government is, but somehow the narrative has been that those of, that all of us are like, somehow we're either superfluous or we're mooching, <laughs> you know, we're not, and, and that's so wrong. There's real jobs and real work to be done, and there's real talent in our core, and that has been not a surprise, it's just been 
exciting because it means then the level at which we can operate is so much higher. And then it's incumbent upon all of us who are, play leadership roles to make sure we take advantage of that. And I, I kind of want to um, pick up on that because that's a really uh, interesting insight that you had. I see that too. And as a business leader, as you took all the kind of learnings, and this is helpful for all of us as we uh, undertake our professional development, you know, what characteristics did you bring into the role that really you learned cutting your teeth in the business sector? And you brought a lot of capacity in on that. What really uh, moved the meter and really leveraged all the great talent and skills here in the department? Well, let me say what I think I admire about you know some of the great business leaders that I have met and I've gotten to know. First, or, or about business, successful business leaders in general, first is focus. You can't boil the ocean. You know, 80, 20, you've got to focus. And so that's one, you know, and, and, and you hear it when we engage, let's say, with our outside partnership groups like the TTAB or the, the Presence Export Council or any of these groups. You know, we ask them to focus. Don't give us 28 recommendations. We can't do all that. Give us the most important ones. Let's get have some success, then we'll move on to the next ones. I think the second thing that I really admire about business leadership is the focus on strategic thinking and strategic planning. Um, and this commitment to continuous improvement. And there's no reason we can't have that same type of culture and approach. Uh, not everything is a fire drill. And the fact that there's an aspect of our work that is re reactive doesn't mean we can't be unbelievably proactive and really thoughtful about how to move the needle. And so, to me, those are a couple characteristics of business leaders. And the final one I would say is the business leaders I admire most have a commitment to community. And they don't see that as in conflict with their commitment to their shareholders or their uh, motive, you know, the need to make, you know, have a bottom line. They see that as, as absolutely part of the, nest, the ecosystem for success. I think we have time for one more, uh, one more question, and uh, I wanted to see if maybe you could talk a little bit about mentorship. Uh, we are always looking for ways to improve. You just emphasized continuous improvement. How and what do you think are some keys to that uh, effort to, to mentor for, for uh, many of us who are giving back? and? finding ways to make people successful? What are, what are some key ingredients there? Well, I, I think, you know, I'm a huge proponent of mentorship. And I'm a huge proponent of find your mentor as opposed to needing you to be appointed one. You know, people love to, to be flattered. And if you say to someone, I'd like you to help, you know, help me help myself, there are very few people who are gonna say no. People are, want to help. They want to be supportive. It doesn't mean that they're doing your work for you. It means they're there to help guide you. Uh, so don't be shy about asking is the first thing I would say. Uh, certainly that was the way I approached it. You know, my own experience was I didn't have many women mentors. Most of the mentors in my life were men. There weren't women in positions of leadership. You know, you have women like Lois who's sitting here, you know, who's, you know, a phenomenal lawyer and, and, and you, know, so, you know, there's just so many women, Ellen, others, who are all in this room and, and, and throughout our department who um, are mentors for women. You have, you know, you've got Bruce and, and, and Jim and others, you know, in your own departments, your own leadership. There's people who can help mentor you. So I seek out a mentor is my first thought about this. The second thing is our responsibility, and we've been trying to do this as much as we can within the context of, of our resources, is to bring expertise to you, 
right? We've brought expertise within the department through some of these sessions that we're doing to bring outside expertise in to try and provide, you know, uh, third-party mentorship and learning and opportunity. Um, the other thing is, you know, you can learn from people by watching them, and they don't necessarily has doesn't have to be a huge uh, engagement. You can have a mentorship experience by saying, you know, I respect and admire that person and watch how they behave, read about them and things like that. So there's lots of ways to gain insights that can help us all improve. And, you know, I will, as I say to my children, I'm a work in progress too, and we're all a work in progress. So it's never too late to invest in yourself and it's never too early either. So um, I'm a big believer in mentorship and the responsibility of those of us in leadership positions to walk the walk and be available as best as we can within our own capacities. That's great. Well, I want to thank all of you for coming uh, today. This is just absolutely wonderful that we've had an opportunity uh, to hear from you, and we have so much to thank you for, and uh, we are just absolutely honored to uh, be here and to work with you. So thank you very much, Secretary. Thank you. I want to thank you. I just want to say two things. First of all, Ellen, thank you. Thank you. This was for doing this. But thank you for joining the Department of Commerce. You've brought a real sense of energy and breadth to uh, uh, the Chief Economist's office. And uh, you've, your team has been a great uh, source of uh, support and information that has helped us, the entire department, do our work better. So thank you for your work. We're really pleased uh, that you've been such a great uh, part of our leadership team, so thank you very much. Um, and I just want to say, nothing is possible without team. And you guys are a great team. I am honored, I love working here, I love working with you, and I love the teams that you form within your own working groups to, uh, to accomplish the wide, vast variety of things that we do. And so I'm very proud to be a part of the Department of Commerce. But what that really means when I say that is I'm a proud to be part of your team. So thank you all for the good work that you do.